Hello gentlemen, this is going to be an information video on how to test and diagnose glow plugs in the XUD9 diesel engine and also the DW8 diesel engine made by Peugeot and Citroen. Before we get bogged down in the nitty gritty of testing procedures, I'd just like to go over which engines this actually applies to. This can be applied to the majority of mechanically injected diesel engines in terms of the testing procedures for the actual plugs themselves, but I'm going to cover quite a bit about the control circuitry for them as well, because a lot of the times when glow plugs burn out unnecessarily and you're wondering why they've burnt out, it can often be an issue with the controlling circuitry that actually controls them. So I'm just going to run over some of the vehicles that these uh, systems are fitted to for Peugeot and Citroën, just so you get an idea of what system your car may have. Now, the XUD9 originally was produced in 1982. It was a naturally aspirated engine with no turbocharger, and it was made between 1982 and 1999. They then decided to turbocharge it in 1989, and these turbo XUD engines were made again up until 1999. Now, this is exactly the same for its, for its smaller brother, the XUD7, which had a 1765cc engine, I think, or was it 1768, not too sure. It's a 1.7 litre unit fitted to the 205, and it was turboed and put in the 309. There was a few others. Again, it's exactly the same for that. In 1999, Peugeot and Citroën scrapped their XU and XUD series engines and introduced the DW series engines. And the DW8, which was the XUD9's replacement, was a naturally aspirated engine. It was first produced in 1999, and it was made up until 2007. The testing procedures for these glow plugs are also exactly the same for the DW8, but these have a bit more control circuitry controlling the glow plugs. Not for the better, unfortunately, like most things electronics. But again, I'll cover this in shortly. We'll, uh, I'll show you how to, uh, how to test this and how to make or put in your own system, which is a thousand times better. These weren't bad engines, the DW8. They were actually a smaller version of the XUD9. They didn't turbocharge them at all. The DW10 engine, which obviously was the bigger one up from this, was actually the HDI engine. It was the 2 litre um, 1997 cc HDI engine. That was the DW10. This is the DW8, which is a mechanically injected unit. And from 2008 onwards, you can forget it. RIP mechanical fuel injection. It was only common rail after 2008. So again, the DW8 here, it's the same, uh, the same testing procedures that we're, um, that we're going to cover here. So if your car, this is, this is just a bit more information on the side here guys, just to check that you are work, that you are um, going to work on the right vehicle here. The XUD9 had a displacement of 1905cc and it was called a 1.9 litre engine. The XUD7, I think it was a 1765cc or 1760, it was 1760 something cc engine. And it had a one, and it was classified as a 1.7 litre unit. The DW8 produced in 1999 up until 2007 was an 1868cc engine, or it was called, or it was nominally known as a 1.8. Some people call it a 1.9, 1.8, 1.9. Call it what you want. The cubic capacity was 1868. So all of these engines here, all of these engines, check your um, check your vehicle logbook, and check that you are um, that you do have one of these engines. And if you do. These testing procedures will be uh, will be right for you. We will have a uh, we will have a run through run through it as to how exactly these work. The most important thing I'm going to mention now, the most important thing when we're testing the glow plugs, is to remember that the warning light on the dashboard, I've written it down here in red, just remember it, the warning light is not fed from the glow plugs. In a decent system, in a, in a system that I would design, we would have our glow plugs here, and I would design it so that the warning light is fed like this off the dashboard. And again, we know that the... Uh, as soon as the glow plugs come on, we know that the uh, then we know that the warning light comes on on the dashboard. So whenever the plugs are on, the warning light are on. This is not what happens. This doesn't happen in this system. Peugeot and Citroen have made it complicated. If that was the setup, it would be easier to test. This is not the case. Let me just rub that out. What actually happens in the different systems? We still have our um, glow plug warning light on the dashboard, but the glow plug light on the dashboard is brought on either by the vehicle ECU or the glow plug ECU, depending on what um, depending on what system it happens. So the glow plug light is always earthed 
in the dashboard, it always connects to earth in the dash. It's not fed from the glow plug rail here, it's not fed from the glow plug rail. It is either fed from the big black glow plug relay under the bonnet, or it's fed from the vehicle ECU. So when the glow plug light is on, it may mean other things. It doesn't, it doesn't necessarily mean that the glow plugs are on, but when the glow plug light is off, it doesn't necessarily mean that the glow plugs are off. So what I'm trying to get at is that the glow plugs may be on and the glow plug light is off. So just remember one thing, that the glow plug light is not connected to the glow plugs. It's connected to either the big black relay that switches the feed for them, or it's connected to the ECU if it's fitted to your vehicle. Now, what happens when we switch the ignition on? We switch the ignition on, and the glow plugs come on for a period of around 15 seconds, I think the timer circuit is, don't quote me on it, it's a nominal 15 seconds, it's somewhere between 10 and 15 seconds the glow plugs come on for. So here we have the glow plugs, are, glow plugs come on, they stay on for a period of around 15 seconds, and then they switch off. The reason why they switch off after 15 seconds is to stop draining the battery and flattening the battery and also to stop burning the glow plugs out. And what happens is they remain off then, even with the ignition on, the glow plugs remain off until the time when you turn the key. And as soon as you turn the key to start, the relay closes in again, this relay and the ECU, these monitor when you hit the starter switch. And it brings the glow plugs on again, brings the glow plugs on. And it keeps them on for around 10 seconds as soon as you'd hit the start switch. But what the interesting thing, what happens here is this is, this black line here is when the glow plugs are on. I'm going to draw a blue line in here which represents when the warning light is on. So the black is the glow plugs, the blue is the warning light. So what happens is the warning light is also off, warning light is also off, the warning light is brought on here, but the warning light goes off after about five seconds, that's it. The warning light goes off, the warning light now goes off, and it remains off, it remains off, and it remains off. And it remains off. So the warning light on the dashboard isn't actually telling you anything. The plugs are actually on for a lot longer period of time. Again, it's not a clever system. I personally would have liked this to be wired to the glow plugs, and I'm going to show you how to do that modification, which I've actually done in my own car. But just for the testing procedures, for God's sakes, remember that the glow plug light on the dash is not representative as to when the glow plug light, when the glow plugs are actually energized. Finally guys, before we go and uh, have a fiddle around with the vehicle that I've got outside, I'd just like to cover the two different types of relays and the two types of SIP control systems that were used to control them. These relays are a black, um, they're a black unit, about, uh, about this big. I don't, I've just actually checked in my parts big and I don't want to have one to hand. They look a bit like this underneath, they have a large terminal, a small terminal and a big multi-pin connector at this end. And they go back, they look a bit like that. And they have a little thing that comes out of here with a with a hole through the middle, which holds it uh, which holds it down. They have the two big wires coming off here, and a big multi-pin connector with a multi-pin wire coming off this end. That's what the uh, bit about the glow plug relay. But there was two different types available. There was two types, remember, guys. Two types, and they're not they're not interchangeable. The first type was a made roughly. I'll label them here. Type one. This is only my type making them. We have the type one. Which had, which had a, I think it was a seven or eight pin connector, seven or eight pin connector. It had a seven or eight pin connector that controlled the circuitry of this. This was made roughly up until 1998. Roughly, roughly up until 1998. Type 2 had only four, well, I'll, I'll relabel this instead of pins. It has seven or eight wires. Control, I'll relabel this guy, sorry. This had seven or eight control wires made up until, roughly up until 1998. The Type 2 only had four control wires. And it was made roughly from 1998 onwards. This one here, the Type 2, was fitted to all DW8s. All D 
W8 engines. So if you have the 1868cc diesel engine, these are put in multiple vehicles, many, many, many thousands of vehicles these are put in. Citroen Bolingos, Jumpies, Dispatches, Peugeot 8, they were put in everything, the 306, they were put in all sorts of vehicles. These, the 206, they were put in, put in loads and loads and loads of vehicles. So these are very, very quite common, quite common indeed. These ones are not so common. I had one of these systems in a 1998 Peugeot 306, naturally aspirated non-turbo. But again, I haven't seen many of the systems about. Needless to say, these are better, and these are pretty damn shit. So the first system I'm going to cover, the Type 1, the, um, the one with the, uh, the, the uh, 7 or 8 uh, connection systems, this system, this system was fitted to vehicles without an ECU that controlled part of the engine. So this was fitted to my naturally aspirated uh, Peugeot 306 from 1998. And I'm just going to explain to you exactly how this system worked. This system had lots of wires going to the glow plug relay. So we had, I'm just going to draw them in here. We had a negative, a ground, we had a plus VE, plus voltage. We had the warning light, the glow plug warning light going to this. This is how to identify which system you've got glow plug warning light. We had a temperature sensor connected to this, a green temperature sensor. Uh, I think it works like that. I'm not too sure whether it's earthed here or whether it actually goes back to the uh, to the ECU like that. I'm not exactly too sure, so don't quote me on exactly how it worked. I think it was actually earthed like that. Um, change in temperature. Temperature sensor. What else wiring did we have in here? We had, we had multiple wires going to this... Um, go into this system. We had a ignition live, we had we had a continuous we had a continuous live. What else did we have? We had we had quite a lot of um quite a lot of cables going to this um go into this system. If you have four if you only have four wires, you had the simple system. Oh there here's another one we had the start feed. We had the start feed going in. This is this is tapped off to the starter motor and the starting system when you engage the key. So there's at least one, two, three, four, five, six. There's at least six wires going into this. I can't. I can't. Sorry, guys. I can't quote actually all the and everything as to what went to it. But there was multiple different wires going into the multi plug of this connector. If you if this glow plug relay only has four wires, you have the second type of glow plug relay, which I'll come on to in a minute. If it's got if it's got six or seven or eight, I think it is. I think there's probably about I think there's seven or eight wires in it. Not too sure. If it has this system with multiple wires going into that multi-pin connector, then again you've got this type here. Now what this type here does, this is all mounted inside the um, relay here. It has quite a lot of circuitry inside here that brings the that makes and breaks the main contact for the glow plugs. This system is quite robust. It doesn't all it doesn't doesn't go wrong usually. This system uh, proves the doesn't doesn't produce much trouble at all. To be honest, this is this is the better um, the better system. But again, it was only produced uh, on limited vehicles, and it was not put into the DW8. If you have a DW8, which I imagine the majority of you um, guys out there who are reading this do, if you have the 1868cc 1.8 diesel engine, then it will not have this. It will have the second type. This is the first type. This is um, this is uh, this is the better type. But the, the main thing to take away from this is the two relays, they look the same, but they're not interchangeable. They have two different multi-pin connector plugs. This is the Type 1. Now I'm going to come on to the to the Type 2. This is the main system out there that was fitted, and the, 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 probably the majority of you watching this video are eager to see. This system was fitted to vehicles that have an engine ECU. That, that previous system wasn't. In this system, the Type 2... We have a vehicle ECU mounted, usually mounted on the left-hand wing of the um, of the bonnet as you're staring at the vehicle. Now this connector pin here only had four cores. I know that for sure. It had four cores on the control on the control wiring. So we still have the two beefy wires going into the relay, and it had four cores coming out here. We have a positive feed. We have a negative, a ground. 
we have two power pins and we have two cores here that go straight from the glow plug relay straight into the engine ECU. And that's it. There's no more wiring on this. This is the second type. This was fitted to all DW8 engines. This system was also fitted to XUD vehicles that had the throttle position sensor and the needle lift sensor that had that crappy AS3 VP20 um, electronic ignition, uh, electronic ignition adv um, injection advance system. This system was fitted to XUDs in some cases, but not all. But this was fitted to all DW8. Now what this does, instead of like the older system, instead of everything feeding into the glow plug relay, now everything feeds into the vehicle ECU. And so your start, your start signal for when you turn the key gets fed into here, the temperature gets fed into here. Um, I know for instance in this case the temperature actually is wired like this, it's wired straight to here, it doesn't, um, it doesn't go back to earth, it's actually a closed loop back to the ECU like that. Uh, what else gets fed into here? The glow plug warning light is actually fed out of here as well. The glow plug warning light actually feeds out of here as well. So again, the glow plug relay is not actually controlling, not actually controlling the glow plug warning light on the dashboard that you see. It's actually the vehicle ECU that controls it. So again, four wires coming at four cores coming out of the multi-pin connector, and you've got the second type. If there's more, more if there's more than four five or six or seven in it, I can't remember exact, the exact number, you've got the better type, but unfortunately this system is pretty damn shit. I'll tell you for why this system is shit, and what produces the most problems with it, is if you have a problem with the vehicle ECU, or let's say there's a wiring wire gets broken in here, and it goes open circuit, what the electronics in here do, this is representing the electronics that control the coil for the relay, these go, ah, there's a fault with the system. And these bring the relay on. If there's a fault with it, they automatically bring the glow plugs on. Automatically brings them on if there's a fault with the system. If this loses its communication with the ECU, with the electronics inside here, if this loses communication with this and the wires break, this automatically brings the glow plugs on. The stupid thing is, it leaves them on. And it leaves them on indefinitely, providing there's a, there's a feed here, it will leave these glow plugs on. So it, it won't flatten the battery, but what it will do is it burns all the glow plugs out. And all of a sudden you find that the glow plugs have actually all burnt out like that. And then you have trouble starting the vehicle in the case that this goes open circuit. So this system really is not a clever idea. Personally, I hate this system. I think it's a pile of shit personally, but this is just the way that Peugeot and Citroen decided to make it. If, it. if it doesn't go wrong, it's fine. It's worth leaving it. But if it has gone wrong, then I would suggest swapping it out. Again, the way to test this is what I described before when the glow plugs come on. You will know when you switch the ignition on, these glow plugs should go off after about 15 seconds. If these glow plugs stay on for longer than 15 seconds, you know you've got a problem in the system. These should switch off after around 15 seconds. If they stay on, you will burn the plugs out and you'll be back to square one within a few miles. For those of you who are out there who are interested in modifying cars and making things work the way you want them to work, I'm going to show you the way that I've done it. So I'm going to call this Nick's way. Best. This, to me, is the best way of doing it, and uh, it's not the way Persia and Citroen would like you to do it, but again, this is the way that I would like to do it, and this is the way I suggest you do it if you're into, into modifying cars. And this is the simple way, keep it simple stupid, all I have done, I have removed all the electronics out of the relay under the bonnet, the big black glow plug relay, all the electronic circuitry I've modified, until the point where I'm just left with the coil and the switch, and I've applied, I've wired the coil to two of the pins of the multi-pin connector. One of them is now an ignition live. This is connected to positive. And this lead runs all the way into the cab to the point where I have a push switch. Which just simply brings the relay on. And that to me is the best way of doing it. You have a push switch in the cabin, you push it in and it brings the relay on. And what I've also done in my car as well, I've also wired the glow plug light straight to the rail here 
like that. That to me is the best way of doing it. It's, a, it's the most simple way of doing it. There's no fancy electronics at all. But you know that when you push the button in, you have brought the glow plugs on manually and you know that the confirmation that the relay has closed in and that there is power on the rail by having the warning light straight fed off the rail here. This to me is the best way of doing it and if you're into modifying cars, you like tinkering around with electronics and you like the XUD engine, I would suggest the way you do this. You can do this to the DW8 engine as well, there's no reason why not. You just have to trace the core that comes out of the ECU. In the DW8 you have the ECU here. At the moment, in the DW8, it's fed like that. All you have to do is find the core that comes out that brings the glue plugs on and wire it straight to the rail here. Then you can still use this system to control the uh, to control the glue plugs. I personally would recommend doing this. It's the most reliable system. It's never given me trouble in the years that I've done it. And plus the fact you have the satisfaction of knowing that if anybody tries to steal your car, if they don't know to bring the glow plugs on, they're not going to be able to start it. So again, extra security feature, really. Sometimes the simplest things are the best. Now... Onwards and upwards, let's test the vehicle. So guys, this is my XUD powered Citroen Synergy, my pride and joy, and as you can see it's having a hard time starting at the moment. Now there are two main reasons why an XUD like this failed to start. These are incredibly, incredibly reliable diesel engines, but two things will cause them not to start. One of them is lack of fuel to the injection pump, and the second one is faulty glow plugs, which we're going to test. The first thing that you'll need to test the glow plugs is a voltmeter. Now, any voltmeter will do. It doesn't have to be anything fancy, anything very expensive. It just so happens I have this uh, very nice oscilloscope uh, here's a hand which has a latchable probe that actually can latch onto the glow plug rail which is the only reason why I'm going to use it just because this will attach nicely to the glow plug rail and you want to measure at the glow plugs between the glow plug rail where it attaches to the glow plugs and the, and the earth and negative so what I'm going to do I'm going to attach this uh, attach this to the glow plugs now I'll take a photo and put it in the video so you can see exactly what I'm doing and exactly where I'm measuring from And as you can see in there, guys, the probe of the meter is latched round the, um, let me get this right, that's latched round the third glow plug in, which is where at the bottom of the thing here, I can't exactly point to it with the camera, but the bottom here, if I wiggle it, this bottom cable here, you see the sleeve moving there, that's where the, um, that's where the relay attaches to, and the probe of the meter, the live probe, is attached to the glow plug. And I'm going to measure between that and earth, and as you can see here, the earth of my meter is simply grounded on top of the injection pump. So I'm going to flick the ignition on now, and I'm going to bring the glow plugs on. Remember, of course, when you're testing it, you will have to test it within 10 to 15 seconds, and it should bring the glow plugs on, and you should see 12 volts on your meter. Okay, guys, you can see the, uh, the meter there bobbling around on the millivolt range. I'm going to press the glow plug button in now on my car, or in your case, turn the ignition on, and you should see the glow plugs come on for around 15 seconds and go off again. They won't come on for 15 seconds in my case, because my car is wired to a simple button on the dashboard, but you should see the rail come live. So watch and see. You may even hear the glow plug relay click as well. That's on. And off again. Now for the next part of this video, I'm going to be using a piece of equipment that some of you may not have. This is a clamp round ammeter, and this is capable of measuring DC. Now you need to be careful, because many of these clamp round ammeters do not measure DC, they will simply measure AC only. You need to get one that can measure DC. You can get simple handheld ones with a screen on them, and these can cost as little as 20 quid on eBay that measure DC. But I'm going to be using this voltage converter current clamp, which is made by Fluke, which is a really good quality piece of kit, and this can attach to any um, any voltmeter, and what this does, this has some circuitry built into it here, and it converts for every amp that it sees going through the, um, 
electric to clamp, it turns it into a, it outputs a millivolt to the multimeter. So effectively, we switch this multimeter onto millivolts, and this effectively tells us the current that is going through here. Quite a clever system. Converts any any voltmeter into a clamp into a um, ammeter. So what we're going to do now, we're going to clamp this round the input to the glow plugs, and we're going to see how much current they're pulling. We know that they're being supplied with a voltage but as to how well the glow plugs are burning should indicate how much current they are consuming. I'm expecting on this car that they're not going to be, uh, that it's not going to be very much, it's going to be nominally zero. So let's put the clamp on meter around, we'll fire the thing up and we'll see how much current these plugs are indeed drawing. Okay guys, I'm sorry if you can't really see the meter here, the lights are reflecting on the screen, but as you can see the meter is bobbling around 0 0.1, 0 0.0 uh, amps at the moment, which obviously is uh, the case for this. So just to prove that the meter works, I'm going to clamp it around the battery in one direction, and we can see we've got positive 5 amps, and if I reverse the clamp on the battery to prove it works, it's now come up with negative 4.5, negative 4.7. So again, I know that my clamp on a meter is actually working at the moment. What I'm going to do, I'm going to reach in and I'm going to grab the wire that feeds up the middle and feeds the glow plugs down in here and I'm going to put the clamp around that. doesn't matter the direction, just ignore the positive or negative sign here. So we can see that our clamp is around the wire that feeds up to the glow plugs. Trace it off the glow plugs, you can see it coming down and trace it down. So watch what happens to the current when I push the button. I'm expecting this to be quite small, so uh, we'll, see what, uh, we'll see what happens when I bring the glow plugs on. Uh, current. If this, if the glow plugs are good, we should be getting about 20 amps. If the glow plugs are bad, it'll be close to zero. Okay, guys. I'd just like to come back to my little whiteboard here, just to explain uh, what the test results are. What the test results are. So, just to explain the test results and what each of the test results can mean. So, the first thing we did on the vehicle out there, we measured the voltage on the on the glow plugs. The voltage measure is proving that there's power available. So, is there any power available to the plugs to use? If there is, which there was in our case, we move on to the next step. If there isn't, we're going to check the relay and the cables that feed it. It's very unusual, and I find that there'll be no feed to the glow plugs. Usually we'll find the problem further on. But this is this is test one, the voltage measurement on the rail. Is the power available? Is the voltage available? Should be 12 volts uh, from the battery. Um, if there isn't, we're going to check the relay and cables. It may be that the contact in the main relay is burnt out, or a cable has come adrift somewhere further up the system. So again, that points you in the right direction as to where to check. That was the voltage measurement. The second measurement that we did out there, we measured the time that it came on for. So the time that it should come on, if you can, if you check with the graphs that I showed earlier in this earlier in this vehicle, with the plugs coming on, going off, and then they come on again when we start. This is the ignition point when we bring the ignition on. This is the start point when we turn the key. They should bring it on for a set period of time, and they should go off again after that. Check again. Check in the video and. Uh, further back in the video if you haven't already watched it just to see what the timing should be and make sure that it goes off again when we talk about this figure when it goes on with the ignition it should go off again if you don't start the engine the time should the, the time period the voltage should go off it's different in my case for the test video I did because I've got my glow plugs wired to a mechanical button that I bring them on for so it won't be the case for, for you guys about that but it should go off uh, it should go off after a set period of time the time measurement if they go this is going to test if the plugs, uh, if it's going to burn the plugs out, if it's going to burn the plugs out. If the time does go off to the correct time, yes, we go on to the current measurement. If it doesn't, it's good luck to you guys, because you need to check the relay and the ECU, because it could be a fault in any of those systems, which is why I don't like electronics. The easiest system I find to do it is to manually convert it, so convert it to a manual button to bring the plugs on. This may not be the case, obviously, if you're working on a customer's car or you're at a garage and you're trying to fix this thing. I wish you the best of luck because it's not an easy system to do, but this is, um, this is, 
this could be uh, this could be big issues for you because usually if the glow plugs are not going off with the correct time measure usually the current measurement will be zero because the plugs will be burnt out so these this this one and this one really go hand in hand these two here really go hand in hand so again the third measurement we did out there the current measurement again some of you may, might not there may not have access to a dc clamp on ammeter but again I, I just showed you out there as you saw the, the current was virtually nothing on the video that uh, the glow plugs were drawing so the current is proving the voltage is proving that power is available at the plugs and the current is measuring how much and the current measurement is measuring how much power the glow plugs are consuming and for a healthy set of plugs it should be around 20 amps we would expect to see the glow plugs drawing around 20 to 30 amps on a healthy uh, with a healthy battery and a healthy set of plugs if the current measurement is, if say we were measuring 20 amps and we did have voltage available and the glow plugs were going off at a set time, say these two here were, um, say everything on here was good, yes, yes, we have got power, we, the glow plugs are going off as they should do, and they are drawing the correct current, if it's yes, then the chances are it's a fuel issue on your car. Why it won't start? If it won't start, and if, it, if, you, if your XUD or DD it won't start and all this is fine, the chances are it's a fuel issue, but this is the easiest, easiest way to test it, start first, start testing at the glow plugs. If there's no current here, if there's no current, or there's, it's only pulling four or five amps or nothing much, no, then the plugs are burnt out. This indicates that the plugs are burnt out. So power is available at the plugs with the voltage measurement. There is electricity available, but the plugs aren't consuming anything because the actual heating element inside them has gone open circuit. So that just uh, that just sums it up to the test results. So when you're testing your vehicle, just compare it to this chart here, just to see what uh, just see what's going on. But I, I I like to test in this order: is the power available at the plugs? Is the power going on and off at the correct time, and are the plugs consuming the correct amount of power?